the advantage of a series is it gives people a sense of where at least they know. You know, I, my wife and I have a dog, and dumb as most dogs, in fact, probably dumber, but, 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 you know, we have started to pick up, if he knows what's going on, he's like, I'm grooving, and he's happy, but if he doesn't know what's going on, he's like, okay, who knows? That's, that's a, that's an animal, what, you know, levels of intelligence below your folks. And I think it's a real favor to your people to have a sense that this month we will. So our, our newsletter, which uh, we call the advance, uh, I, write a, I write a sermon outline for the month. And the first paragraph is what I call the tickler. And let's say, it'll say, uh, we all know fear. Sometimes fear is disabled. Sometimes it's a wisdom. But often the things we talk about when we say fear are the things we've already learned to manage. The things we don't talk about that we might want to talk about are the things that we haven't learned to manage those fears. I'll make it the circle. That's the gist of this October's No Fear Intro. And so this year, for because I looked at the lectionary, and this is important, the lectionary shaped my sense of what I would preach on greatly. I knew I was preaching on fear, because it's October. It's in the air. You can watch the TV. In the la- go home. Check your channels. They're all horror TV shows, right? If you don't like that, you're turning your TV on. Although, I am a horror show last night. Just saying. But it's in the air to talk about fear. But as I looked at the lectionary, I realized, wow, these are all not about fear of somebody else. They're about fear of processes we have with God and with our soul. So then I wrote the fifth book. And having looked at that and studied that, I said, you know, some fears we have are fears of the very things we think we want best but can't do but won't talk about. Like, for example, this Sunday, I told you, it's going to be about the spirituality God is calling us to have Connection we are called to have with God, and we're going, yeah, let's have it through Moses. That'd be right. Because it's it's scary to develop my spiritual life, right? So so the tickler tells people what we're gonna do for the month. Then there's a a title, not much more. Scripture, so they can read a little bit ahead, and a title. Okay, that's what's in there. Okay. Now, I then send out to a worship team. Something I call the worship assist. It has things like, don't forget, ushers, you got to remember, we're going to have more people on this one Sunday, and don't forget, we need to change the colors, and things like that. But it also has things for those who are playing in music and playing in Sunday school class. And then the worship assist, I have my one sentence. I can't usually write out the whole sentence as the, the faux text, but usually I make a, a this is about. So three weeks ahead, the music planner knows this sermon is about having my, developing my personal spirituality. <laughs> Go ahead, Allison. God bless you. So, so my music planners know three weeks in advance that I'm going to talk about developing a personal spirituality as opposed to just somebody else that they're living through the churches or the pastors. They know that for this Sunday. They've known that for three weeks. Or, yeah, three weeks. So their outline is the tickler, the scriptures, the title, and part of my faux text sentence. So they're able to go back to Sunday school and say, hey, you know, if you want to sync up with pastor's topic, we'll do. That's kind of handy. So an outline, I'm uh, uh, sorry, a topic for a month, a series, gives people the ability to go, oh, this is what we're going to do. And then, then it has direction. Rather than just, oh, come, who knows? And then you're like, my little dog, it looks uncomfortable. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, hold on. I first do the whole book sometimes. Matthew, Mark, Mark. And then I turn into Christian in the book of Peter. I was going to start November. November. Uh, so, so, then I'm saying, if I do that, then. 
I have to find topics uh, in Hebrews for Christmas theme. Uh, yeah, but I'm struggling with that right now. Yeah. 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 Still brightly glowing, even while knowing seasons of pain. Fierce from hope, this fire igniting, even while fighting through waves of rain. Come sing your song. Depths resonating, all of our hating falls away. Reaching out, that's a good one. Uh, can you drink this cup? Or can you drink that cup? Or, um, can you drink the cup? Jesus. Uh, another one by him that, uh, uh, well, what's one we just did recently? It's great. Um, uh, shoot. A living. Living. Uh, it's come to me. Anyway, on me now in, if you can go through an on me now in book, you probably have a series. You're probably ready to preach a series and do four weeks or five, do a month. It's much more orderly. Kind of like, I don't know if you've seen that. Uh, lectionaries come in two forms. There's called the common calendar lectionaries. Common calendar lectionaries start with January 1, which is fine. <laughs> liturgical uh, lectionaries start, the liturgical years start with the admin to move through the seasons. They're mostly built around your Sunday worship. The common calendar when you're used to build around your private reading at home. I haven't seen, I'm sure there are some, but I'm sure there's some that sync them up. Um, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
the revised Common Lectionary is wonderful. And um, I recommend people that they go to the revised Common Lectionary. Oh, N O U W E N. Uh, the site I use to, to do the, I look at the revised Common Lectionary, even though we go to the General Board of Disciples and has one too, but I go to lectionary.library.vanderbilt.com. As in the University of Indiana, <laughs> Yeah, lectionary. I'll write it up there. What? Uh, uh, the, no, I don't. I don't know. I, I just go straight there. But uh, uh, it's uh, lectionary. Library. Edu. I'll write that up. I, I always consult the lectionary. That doesn't mean I always preach it, but I always. And I usually consult it asking, where is he going to take it? Uh, should I go there? Uh, uh, my big question, though, for you, and I'm not going to have to answer it, when you're ready to preach, if those of you who are preaching, when you're ready to preach, do you think you can do that? Do you think you can put your sermon meaning, your sermon content, your sermon, do you think to be plain in a sentence? Do you think you could put it in a sentence in such a way people could leave saying, hey, pastor, well, I tell you what, I'm going to quote that to my kids when I get home and say your sentence, you know? It's hard to do. If you're not clear, do yourself and your people a favor. Preach a really short sermon. Because there's no sense to involve the Get it up. Five or ten minutes and then go home with it. Because you don't really have much to say if you're not clear as to what it is you're saying. I don't mean to be overly critical. But you need to know what you're preaching. Now, when you're preaching textually, here's the problem. There is rarely in America, and this is true now in Islam, it's kind of funny. Uh, the same thing's happening in Islam with their holy book, you know, it's being hijacked by the fundamentalists. There is rarely in America somebody take, making a point about God without quoting scripture. I don't care if they're nuts. I don't care if they're Jim Jones or some guy trying to kill all the people in San Diego. I'm telling you that America likes to hear, it says right here in the Bible. That doesn't mean the Bible's being read well. It just means it's being quoted. <coughs> I had somebody tell me about something. I don't remember what it was even now. It's such a bizarre thing. It was, it's left my head. Some nut house idea. And I and it sounded like they convinced themselves to hate people. And I'm like, well, why would you think that? And she said, well, I just, I'm just trying to be biblical. And whatever the hatred was, I had I was like, yeah. and she said, what? Well, it says right here. And she quotes a scripture. Is quoting a scripture being biblical? <laughs> it is a rhetorical question. Your people don't know the difference most of the time. And your people will meet a Jehovah's Witness at their front door, and they'll come to church and say, Oh, Jehovah's Witness. And they walk down everything. But you know what, Rob? They just really know the scripture. Do that. If they did, would they need Jehovah's Witness? Now, I'm not denying God works in Jehovah's Witnesses. I got no problem with Jehovah's God works everywhere. But would I recommend you to go off and become a Jehovah's Witness? No. But they preach the Bible. The Bible oftentimes they think they're being biblical. They're quoting the 